Yes, ma'am. Because I'm sure you're wanting to know both how to, how to proceed with objections and such, and since it matters, I assume that's where you're going. Yes, ma'am. That's reasonable. Um, do you all want to wait a minute and look at what they've got, or can we move forward? Honestly, if we had five minutes, I think we'll be through marking it. And Mr. because he's seen them, I think you could look through them pretty quick. Is that is that fair? And Judge, what we can do when we get to it, we can go ahead and start. And then uh, when he hands them to me, if I have any that I think are irrelevant or something, um, I'll pull them aside and then ask if we can approach and put my objections on the record to specific ones. I'm, I'm fine with doing that. Anything else before I bring the jury in? Nothing in the state. No, ma'am. Oh, bring the jury. Let's all rise for the jury, please. Congratulations are all in order to um, Mr. Howard's granddaughter pass the ball. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are ready to resume with the defense of the case. Mr. Hogmore, please proceed. Thank you, Judge. We'll call uh, Leanna Taylor. She's in number eight. I'm ready. Good morning, Leanna. Um, I know you're a little nervous. Yeah. All right, so let's test this out. Um, say good morning back. Let's see how you sound. Good morning. Okay. Take a deep breath. All right. Um, are you Leanna Taylor? I am. All right. Did you did you used to be Leanna Harris? I did. Are you Cooper's mom? I am. All right. Um, Tell these folks a little bit about Cooper. Cooper was the sweetest little boy. <laughs> he had so much life in him. He was everything to me. He loved to smile. He loved to play. He would talk to and smile at anybody. It didn't matter if it was a stranger or not. He loved to play with cars. Um, he was really fascinated by trucks and cars. And he loved um, bananas and just running around, get tickled. I mean, he was just like any other toddler. Um, he just, he, he was so even, just, he was so even tempered. Just everything about him was just very laid back, very, chill, very um, go with the flow, um, and he, he was just amazing. I mean, I, I, I miss him so much. I, um, and Ross was his dad. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I want to talk to you a little bit, um, Leanna, about the nature of the relationship between uh, Cooper and his dad, okay? Okay. Um, if you could, tell these folks to the jury uh, just what kind of dad Ross was. He was a very involved dad. Um, he, it was 50-50. Everything was split down the middle. It wasn't just a mom-do-everything kind of uh, parenting style. We were both very involved. 
um, diaper changes, baths, putting in the bed, meals. Everything was very even, very split um, as far as that's concerned. What was the, um, was the um, childhood? Very much. Right. Tell us about how he, um, would he, um, how would he treat Cooper in, in, in public or around strangers? <laughs> he, like I said, Cooper was very friendly to everybody. Um, so he would smile at strangers, wave at strangers. Um, and Ross would often just point him out, yeah, that's my boy. Um, that's my baby. He, he talks to everybody. What about, um, <clears throat> what about when you were in restaurants or the grocery store and um, Ross would be with Cooper and y'all would um, interact with people that you didn't even know? It's just the same. I mean, he. Ross would talk to anybody, um, and uh, he was very, very friendly, outgoing. And so, if anybody, you know, made notice of Cooper, which they did, because he was a very cute baby, very cute kid, um, he would, you know, yes, yeah, my little boy, he's, you know, so much old. He, he just loves to smile at everybody. It's fair to say, he, Ross, uh, liked showing Cooper off. Is that fair to say? Yes. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, sort of the time that they uh, spent together. Um, did, um, <coughs> did it appear to you that Ross tried to find ways to spend time with Cooper? Yes. All right, can you tell us about that? He was home most every night for dinner. We ate dinner as a family. Um, he was involved in, uh, you know, feeding him when he, uh, before he started feeding himself. Um, he would feed him, I would feed him. Bath time, um, involved in bath time. I did give him a bath a lot of the time, but uh, Ross enjoyed giving him a bath as well. And um, we would just, I mean, just play around the house. Like, um, he'd get his toys out and, and run around with him. He had a really, he had a big red ball that he loved to play with, and he would throw that up and around, and, and they would toss that together and um, play chase and um, watch TV and read books. Was it typical for Ross to just shove Cooper off on you? Um, you to have to take care of him at night? No. Tell us a little bit about what kind of uh, time they were able to spend together uh, out, outside of the home. What, what sort of things would Ross and Cooper do together? Uh, we went to the parks a lot. Um, you know, just to go to the parks and swing and slide. And um, we were. Uh, we went to several Braves games, um, uh, sometimes with friends, and uh, took him to that. He always enjoyed that. Um, we had been, we went out to the aquarium, uh, went to the circus. Um, I mean, he pretty wherever we went, he went. We 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 didn't go out without him very often. Tell us about uh, how Ross would be with Cooper, say, when y'all went to the park. He wanted to be the one to push him in the swing. He wanted to be the one to slide down the slide with him. <clears throat> he wanted to be with him, enjoying every second he could with him. Okay. He was involved. Very. Um, you mentioned Braves games. Um, did... Um, did Ross ever take Cooper to the Braves games by himself? Yes, Ross. Right. And um, did you and Ross ever discuss um, why he would take him to the games, or why he wanted to take him to the games? I mean, it was just, it was something that he could do with him that they could share together. I don't know if we ever really discussed it, but um, the particular time that he took him by himself, I believe I was out of town for work. And um, just got a text message, hey, I'm going to go to the Braves game with Cooper. And um, he just went. Right. Um, we're going we're gonna to go into a few more uh, specifics in just a little bit. But I want to move into another uh, subject now and kind of ask you to tell us a little bit about, by the way, how long were you married to Ross? Um, nine 
nine and a half years. Nine and a half years. Um, and uh, let's put this way: How long were you married to him before uh, before Cooper died and Ross got arrested? Eight years. All right. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit about uh, about Ross's personality. Um, what um, what kind of character traits or personality did he have? He always had a very large personality. Um, it's something I can remember as far back as us dating. He grew up in the town that we met in, um, and, you know, we would go out, and he would know five, five different people, um, you know, in the evening, and he just would talk to everybody, um, very um, outgoing, very vocal. Um, he didn't, he never met a stranger. It was, it was not unusual for him to, you know, reach out to a, a person maybe at a table sitting next to us, you know, overhearing their conversation and say, oh, yeah, I saw that game too. What do you think about this? I mean, he, he really very, just didn't meet a stranger. I mean, very, appear very confident, um, very sure of himself. Um, and I'm, I always... He liked to be the center of attention. Um, did Ross have a tendency to um, exaggerate? Yes. Tell us about that. If he, because I was with him um, in several different, you know, situations, like, you know, if he's going to tell a story, I would hear that story several different times. Um, each time he told that story, it may be a little bit different. There might have been more of whatever he was talking about, or it would have been grander, or you know he would have gotten more excited about it and talking about it. Um, and I, you know, I would point that out to him later and say, "You realize the last time you told that story, you didn't? Right. That's not quite right." So, um, for example, if you all been to a restaurant five or six times, he might say, "Oh, we've been there a hundred times." Yes, that sounds very much like Ross. Okay. All right. What about um, um, what about um, his um, his attention? Um, was he the kind of person that was very focused, or was he easily distracted? I would say he's easily distracted. Um, would have to, you know, call his attention to things as far as financial. Um, I guess a good example would be, you know, maybe getting a paycheck and forgetting to cash it, cash it. Um, just, you know, those kind of things. Um, call his attention to time. Um, you, you know, we need that? to, we need to leave at 7, don't start getting ready at 6.50. Um, that was something that was, you know, kind of a, a common thing. Um, just didn't really seem to have a, a huge awareness of, you know, what time we needed to be there, how long it took to get there, and how long it actually took for him to get ready. Okay. Did you characterize him as absent-minded? Somewhat, yeah. Um, what about, um, what about anger? Never. You were married to him for over nine years, never's pretty comprehensive. You mean he never got angry? He never got overly angry. Okay. Um, the way that I see anger is if, if somebody's getting mad at you and, and you feel like you need to, to step back, mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was never part of his personality. Um, he was not an angry a lot of things didn't really bother him. I mean, it, he was very even, even kill, very laid back, and that was the way most of, um, I mean, sure, we had fights, but there weren't many, you know, drop down, you know, drag, you know, just huge fights that 
that stay in my memory. Um, oh, you had a toddler. Mm -hmm. And it obviously can be very um, stressful at times with a, with a little one in the house. Um, did you ever see him angry uh, with Cooper? Not angry at him. Mm -hmm. um, maybe frustrated. I mean, everybody gets frustrated. Okay. Like what? Um, maybe if he was having a particularly di difficult time going to bed. Um, you know, we really didn't, hadn't gotten to that point where uh, we were, you know, he understood what no meant, but it wasn't, we didn't have a, you know, there wasn't a lot of, he was just 22 months old, we didn't have a lot of discipline, you know. Right. Um, so there was, there was never any, you know, if he, if he did something, like let's say he threw a toy and he was throwing the toy to get our attention or to bring attention to himself. And we had asked him not to throw that toy. Then Ross would very firmly say, no, do not throw that toy. Please do not throw that toy. You're talking about general parenting issues. Right. Right. Now, did you, did you ever see Ross express anger or hatred or malice toward his son, ever? No, never. Was Ross um, was Ross um, an emotional kind of person that uh, cried easily, or was he a little more stoic in his in his personality? No, it it goes back to the the anger thing. He 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 stayed in the middle of the spectrum. There wasn't a huge. Yeah, uh, very, very angry over here, very, very sad and depressed over here. He stayed very much in the middle. Um, so there, there wasn't, there, there weren't very many situations where he would be just down and sad. Okay. I've, um, I've asked you before if you thought that Ross, if you noticed that he had any particular coping mechanisms during times of, of stress. Do you recall? Do you recall talking to me about that? Whether he had any coping mechanisms? I do. Um, his, from what I observed over the years, if um, Ross felt uncomfortable, insecure, he overcompensated with confidence. Um, I don't know how to explain it other other than other than that. It just. to to kind of suppress the insecurities. Okay. All right, I want to talk to you um, <coughs> just briefly sort of about what y'all's routine or habit or schedule was um, on, on, a, on a typical day, right? Um, so if you could uh, walk these folks through what uh, a basic day was like, uh, a work day in your house. Mm -hmm. Um, where Ross worked, um, there was a daycare on site, um, so Ross was normally the one to take him to daycare. So when you say on site, explain to them, everybody what you mean by that. There were two separate locations. Um, Ross worked at the treehouse. That's not where the daycare was. The daycare was located at the SSC building, um, and uh, it, you know, I, don't know, I don't know how far it was um, from the treehouse. But um, because it was it was on, basically on the way for him, the uh, he would take Cooper to daycare. Um, it, Cooper's daycare was also on the way for me. So if it was a morning that he had something going on, then then I would take him. Um, but most of the time, he wanted that time in the morning to spend with him. Um, he the Ross wanted the time in the morning to spend with Cooper. Right. Okay. He so what would they do in the morning around the house? Well, most of the time I would leave, but before I would leave, um, they would be sitting in the bed. Maybe we're also drinking some coffee. Um, Cooper might be uh, eating what we he had. We would give him a little, what we called his breakfast snack in the morning. He would always wake up wanting a snack, and um, I'd put him in the bed with Ross, and and 
they would sit and I'd turn on some cartoons and they would watch some cartoons. Okay. So you're telling us uh, that there was no specific schedule or routine for who was going to take Cooper in the morning? Objection to leading at this point, Judge. Was there any specific schedule about who was going to take him on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday? No. Um, it depended. We, I worked part-time, so I didn't work five days a week. It depended on my schedule as well as his schedule. Ross was the primary person to take him to daycare in the morning, but you know, every now and then, uh, maybe once a week, um, maybe less often than that, I might be the one to take him. Um, I would be the one that picked him up m most evenings, but I wasn't always the one that picked him up. Okay. So as an example, uh, would it be fair to say if, um, if Cooper went to daycare four days a week, Ross would probably take him three or four of those days? I would say that's accurate. Do you pick up part of the time? Do you pick up part of the time? I picked up more often than he did. And the reason for that was I got off work earlier most of the time, um, and so I would just go straight from work and pick him up. Our goal was for him to be in daycare as little as possible. All right, so where would he typically, where would Cooper typically have his full breakfast then? Most mornings at the daycare. All right, daycare being Little Aprons. Yes. All right, are you, um, are you aware if Ross would um, call the daycare if he was running late to let them know to hold some breakfast for Cooper? I wouldn't be, be there at home when that happened, mm -hmm. but he had mentioned that to me before because I, I think one morning I mentioned, hey, don't, don't forget daycare you know, serves at 8.30. If he's not there, um, they, they won't have breakfast for him. Okay. And um, he said, oh, I'll call him and tell him that it's, we're, we're on our way. Okay. They'll hold it for me. I've done it before. You know, something along that line. <coughs> All right. Were you um, were you aware that uh, on occasion Ross would actually take Cooper to the Chick Fil A in Vinings before he took him to the daycare? Yes. All right. Um, was that something that was done every week? No. I wouldn't say it was something that was done every week. Um, I don't know how often often they went. That's just not something that I can recall. Um, but if they did go, sometimes he would send a picture of him eating. Um, okay. Would, 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 um, are you aware if he even took him every month? No. I, I know that there was a, uh, a day where he did send me a, send me a picture of Cooper and uh, eating a sausage biscuit at Chick-fil-A and it said um, something along the lines of, you know, we're a daddy-son breakfast, we haven't done it in two months. Alright, so you got that. Okay. Leanna, I'm going to show you what's been admitted. I'm showing her 81. Sure. Side. It looks like it's just one side. But I, I do see the message on there. Okay. Yes, that's the one at the Daddy Sun Breakfast we have in. Do you have any knowledge or any recollection 
at Ross to Cooper to Chick Fil A at all in the month of April or May or any time in June before June 18th? I don't know. Okay. Um, you didn't receive any pictures that he did. No. And if he did, he didn't tell you. Or if he did, he told me in conversation, and it's been two and a half years. All right. Um, do, do you know if, um, well, how was, um, how was Ross with, with money? Um, carrying cash or the ability to keep track of his money? At the time that everything happened, he was the one managing the money. Um, for most of our marriage, I was the one that managed the money. Um, and I think at that at that point, it was it was a conversation that we had. He, I think he really wanted to show me that he could manage the money. Um, I'm just more of a more detail oriented, and you know, very you know, I'd have a set budget for everything and wouldn't always go by it, but I would try to. And Ross, you know which is not, he wouldn't spend money on big things, but little things that would add up. Um, you know, not knowing how many times he ate out in a week and how much that added up and um, maybe contributed to some excess spending during sure. that month. And um, did you at any time, did he ever carry cash? Yeah, he had cash at, at times. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how much though. Okay. All right, I want to talk to you about um, very uh, difficult uh, subject. Uh, I'll talk to you about some problems in your marriage, okay? Um, you and Ross had some problems. Yes. Um, tell, tell these people what kind of problems you had. We, the way that I would group our problems would be intimacy uh, problems, uh, sexually related. Um, as far as, as how we got along and how we managed our home and co-parented, everything was very normal. I mean, we, we, we didn't fight a lot. We didn't um, have issues in that aspect. It all came back to the sexual. There was no... Um, there was just no sexual relationship. It was it was very uh, forced. It was very difficult to engage in that with each other. Just a lot of loss in intimacy. Um, I can I can go into detail about how that started um, and and how I feel like that started. Well, it's um, I know that it's difficult for you, but it's something that's it, it's, it's kind of been um, it's part of the case, and it's uh, obviously part of your relationship. Um, Let's, um, if, if you could, just tell, tell the jury what basically what the problems were. Okay. Um, we were married in 2006. Um, the first thing that kind of came up was in 2008. I came home from work one day, and he told me that he had a problem with pornography. Um, he had been talking to a friend of his that day, uh, discussing the issue, and decided to confess that to me that day. Um, at that time, I, I don't, it, it wasn't something that, it shocked me, but it wasn't like, I didn't think it was a huge issue. I guess I underestimated um, the problem. Um, we didn't do any kind of counseling then, didn't seek help. Um, basically, it was just a, you know, understanding, I'm going to get this under control, and you know, it'll be okay. Um, two years after that, probably, and, and I'm not completely clear on these years, but around 2010, um, I uh, found a message on his phone that uh, I guess you would describe it as, as sexting. I didn't see it in that way then. It wasn't something that I had a lot of knowledge of, um, but the message was you know, something along the lines of, you know, show me your boobs. 
and um, I, I, the way that I found it was I was in the bed and his phone was in the bed. I picked up the phone just to see what time it was when I woke up and I saw the message. Didn't, didn't notice what kind of, you know, what it was on or anything. I just... Yeah. Did you confront him? Yes, right then and there. All right. Um, there, there, you know, the, that was probably one of, one of our more um, vivid fights that I can remember. I went into the bathroom, I shut myself in the bathroom, and I asked him to leave. And he wouldn't leave, he wouldn't leave me, he didn't want to leave me. Okay. Did you, um, um, as a result of that, did you, did you, did you do anything? Yes, we did. We um, met with our uh, pastor at the time at our church. Um, we set up some, uh, what's called Covenant Eyes uh, software on the phone that would track websites that he went through, went to and would send it to an accountability partner. Um, and we did counseling with the pastor. I can't remember how often. All right, so what you're telling us, if I understand correctly, this is as far back as 2010 when you found this uh, sexting on his phone? It was 2010. Okay. Um, and you said you went to the pastor for counseling was Ross willing to go with you and do that? Yes. What was, co you said Covenant Eyes, what was that? It was the software that they installed on his computer to track the, if, if he went to, the way I understood it was if he went to a website that might be pornography, just for example, it would flag it and then it would send an email to the accountability partner. Who was that? Billy Kirk. And who's Billy Kirkpatrick? He's a friend of ours. And after uh, 2010, when um, when you found this, mm -hmm. you all started counseling. Did um, did the <coughs> did the intimacy issues continue? Yes, it did. Right. Um, were, there, were there physical issues as well? It, it was a Somewhere between 2008 and 2010, um, we started having issues with um, erectile dysfunction um, in Billy to different form, um, and it was just difficult. My reaction to that wasn't very good. Um, of course, my first thought is, it's me. There's, there's something wrong with me. He's not attracted to me. Um, and my reaction was not very good. I would get upset. I would cry. It did a lot of damage to our ability to connect intimately, in my opinion. Um, Are these the kind of things that you talked about with the counselor? Once we got into to official counseling with a sex therapist, yes. All right, let's move ahead. Um, did there come a time in uh, 2013 where this issue reared its head again? Yes, we had... Uh, we had already moved to Atlanta. Um, I, I, can't, I think it. I'm trying to think of think of the dates. Right, if Cooper was born years. in Cooper. August of 2012 mm -hmm. to orient you, right? Right. Some, something happened in either de December of 2012 or January of 2013. Okay. Um, I, I rolled over in bed and I noticed there was something playing on his computer and I thought it was just a movie and I said, well, what are you watching? And he just kind of, you know, kind of started to shut down a little bit and he just looked at me and he said, pornography or porn or something, something like that. And of course I was, I don't think I reacted harshly. I think it was more along the lines of, you know, I thought that, that we had got this, you know, we had solved, not solved it, but got this you know, out in the open and under control, and, you know, I don't, don't understand. We were in a, um, a small group at that time. The leader of our small group was a counselor. Uh, Leanna, I'm sorry, to explain to these people what you mean by small group, because they may not understand what that, what, what you mean by that. We were in a small group with our church. Um, we would, we would get together with maybe about five or six other couples, and, um, we would, uh, study a certain book together. Um, there were a couple of books that we went through at that time. We were going through a book called Sacred Marriage. Um, and uh, we, we, uh, I contacted 
to the leader of a small group because she was a counselor. She knew the area better. We had only been there for about six or seven months. Um, with Ross's permission to, you know, divulge our, our very personal, intimate details of our of our problems, so that she could help us find a counselor that would fit our needs. And um, so she recommended a counselor, and we started seeing him either in January or February of 2013. It, after, um, <coughs> I don't know if we had been to counseling yet, but well, let Rob, me pull, before we move on to that, I want to make sure that uh, Corey and everybody, we're still talking about sometime end of 2012, beginning of 2013. Right. And um, you and Ross talked and you, you ended up divulging this information to the, to the woman who's the leader of the small group? Yes. Who was that? Bethany Davis. Okay. Um, and did, do you have any knowledge if, if Ross um, sh shared this information with the men in the small group? He did. Okay. We were driving um, one night to the, to the group and uh, he said, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to you know, tell the men what I'm struggling with. And I said, well, you know, that's completely up to you. Um, and uh, he said, I want to I do it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my side to the women. Okay. Deanna, did you, um, <clears throat> did you want to make your marriage work? Yes. Did you love him at the time? Yes. Tell us about... Um, how counseling went from there? We uh, started going once a month, um, and uh, they were hour-long sessions. We, we went together most of the time, but there were a few occasions where he would have Ross come in by himself, maybe once or twice. Um, and I think I went by myself one time, just so that we could he could get to know us better and that we could speak very, very freely. And what... What time frame was this? I would say every month from either January or February of 2013 to towards the end, maybe October, November of 2013. And in your mind, did it, did it, did it appear to be helping either in the bedroom or emotionally? We still were connected. Sexually. Right. All right. Did there come a uh, time sometime in the late summer, early fall of 2013 when Cooper was about one where uh, you had a big blow up because you found something on Ross's phone? Yes. All right. Tell us about that. Um, that was, was the... I picked up his phone and um, it was a very similar situation as last last time. Just you know, wanted to get a, a read on the time. We were getting ready to go to dinner. Um, his brother and his wife were there. Um, my brother and sister-in-law. We had a babysitter coming to watch Cooper, and we were going to go to dinner. Um, picked up his phone and uh, clicked it on, and it, a message automatically popped up. It wasn't sexual in any way, but I could just tell that it was from a female, and it was. Um, I can't remember the exact word, but it used something like, I know hon, or I know babe, or something like that. And I knew it wasn't from a guy friend. They don't talk to each other like that. Um, and so I, I, I exploded. I was, I was very, very angry. Um, I uh, confronted him immediately. I, I said, we're not going anywhere. You need to go tell your brother why we're not going. You need to go in that room right now and you tell him. It was the most upset I've probably seen Ross. Um, he was very concerned that I was going to leave him, very concerned that I was going to take Cooper. Um, I thought it was a huge eye opener. Did you, um, did you want to work it out and save your marriage? Yes. I texted our counselor that night and basically said, we need an emergency session. We need, we need to talk this through. And was Ross willing to uh, go back to the counselor and talk to the counselor some more? He was. Okay. He never resisted counseling. All right. Deanna, um, since 
Cross was arrested, you've become aware that um, there were a lot of um, sexual issues outside of your marriage going on with Ross, haven't you? Yes. Did, um, through your marriage, did you know that Ross was sending nude photos of his genitals to women? No, I did not. Did you know that Ross was, um, had um, engaged in uh, meeting a woman at a park to have uh, fellatio in his car? Did you know that um, Ross had um, more than one woman come into your home to engage in sexual acts with him? No. Did you know that he would spend time during the day on the telephone talking to various women? No. Did you know that he would actually express love for other women? Did you know that he had engaged in sexual acts with a uh, prostitute? No, and if I had, I would have divorced him then. I would have left. What if you'd known about any of this stuff? I would have left. We would have separated. Did I don't you? think it would have been able to be, it wouldn't have been able to be undone. Did, um, even though you didn't know about these things in particular, y'all had some, uh, you just told us you had, um, you found stuff on his phone. You told us about that. Right. Did it ever come where you, a you, uh, time when you specifically talked to him about divorce? Yes. Um, it was probably after the, the last, um, the last time something came up. Early um, fall of 2013? Yes. I just, it, it didn't come from a fight. It, I just very bluntly one night said, do you want a divorce? Do you, I mean, if, if you want a divorce, you can have it. I will give it to you if that's what you want. And I believe his uh, answer back to me was, that's the last thing I want. I do not want that. Okay. Knowing what he did, um, now feel like Ross wanted to stay married to you and be able to go run around objection leading judge. Okay. Based on his answer to you, did you believe that Ross wanted to stay married to you? Objection, speculation, and hearsay. Hearsay. Did you give him an easy out to the marriage if he wanted it? Objection, leading again. That's a yes or no. That could, could go either way. Yes, I did. Outside of the um, sexual problems in your marriage, um, I want you to tell us, tell us about the other components of, uh, of the relationship sort of the, of the family dynamic? I mean, I think I, I think I mentioned before, we were, everything was was as a, as a team. We approached um, everything as a team, whether it was cooking, cleaning, uh, taking care of Cooper, um, everything was, was, we will do this together. Um, and so everything was very much, it was, it was shared duties as far as managing the household. Uh, managing money, um, it was typically one or the other would do it. Um, I did it for the most part of our marriage. He did it for the last six months. Um, and, you know, I would, we, we would be involved in that, obviously. But that was typically more individual. What about um, uh, common interests? Did uh, as part of as part of your the, the family dynamic, um, did that part of the marriage work? Did y'all have common interests? Um, we Ross is very interested in music. I, I don't have a music background. Um, I think that 
once we, we got over into the Atlanta area, we found a more common interest together, which was um, some hiking. We did some hiking together. Um, that was more the most thing that comes to my mind when I think of things that we did together and we enjoyed together. Um, we enjoyed, I mean, going out to dinner, going out to movies, uh, going to Braves games. Um, but I think that the hiking sticks out to me mostly because it was just something that we had newly dis newly discovered. We didn't have any, you know, small right. mountains to, to hike in where we lived in Alabama. And, uh, we were kind of getting into that. What about your faith? Did y'all share, share a faith? Yes. Right. Tell us about that. Um, we were Christians, um, and uh, that's, you know, that, that was the the underlying reason for why I did most things um, in our marriage. Um, I'm, a, I'm a child of divorce. Um, I, I know what that looks like, and uh, it was not something that we wanted uh, to, for us, to me. Um, marriage was um, forever, supposed to be forever. And he obviously violated that trust, didn't he? Absolutely. What about um, what about family? Did, um, did did you both share that in common? Did you both want family? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was um, Cooper a planned pregnancy? Very much so. Tell us about that. Um, we. Uh, decided to start trying to get pregnant in February of 2011. Um, we were excited. We didn't know how long it would take. We had some uh, issues uh, with the ED, with the erectile dysfunction. Um, and uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but he also had a diagnosis of low testosterone, which can cause the erectile dysfunction, but it can also cause a decrease in um, sperm. Um, we didn't, uh, we started trying in February, uh, several months went by, um, six, seven months, uh, I was very discouraged, negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test, I would get very upset, very down, um, and, uh, was, I mean, very much, almost obs obsessed with it, like I, I would check my temperature and and you know, do ovulation tests to make sure I was ovulating and the timing was right. And um, he was, uh, you know, supportive of me through all that. He he wanted it too. It was never something that you know. He said, "Well, why don't we just you know stop and you know see what happens?" He was supportive in you know everything that I was doing to try to help um, help us get pregnant. Uh, we had um, I went to my uh, OBGYN doctor sure everything was okay with me. We did have um, testing done for him too to make sure that, that he was normal. Um, things were low but still considered normal. You, you both had physical tests? Mm-hmm. If I understand correctly, because the pre uh, pregnancy wasn't happening as quickly as you wanted. Right. I was concerned that we wouldn't be able to get pregnant. Okay. So I went to my doctor. She did, you know, uh, exam on me. discussed other, other uh, she was the one who recommended that I get the ovulation test and try that, make sure that I had ovulating, and that they would, um, that they would test Ross's sperm to see if there were any issues there. Okay. And did that um, happen? Hmm? And did that happen? Did they test it? Mm -hmm. Yes, they tested it. And it was, it was normal, but on the low end of normal. Um, I don't remember the exact got to the point where it was so, I was so upset about it every single month that I kind of decided to kind of, you know, just kind of chill a little bit. That's what everybody says, you know, when you're trying to get pregnant, you're not going to get pregnant, so if you just kind of lay back and, you know, see see what happens, it, it tends to happen easier. Um, and I finally got pregnant in November of 2011. Was Ross happy about that? 
Yes, we um, we we found out that we were pregnant on his birthday, and he was very excited. I want to I want to move into another area, um, Leanna. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of what what you went through on June the 18th of of 2014, and. Um, I want to start with, um, I, I guess that morning, did you, um, w was that a work day for you? It was. I was working in, I was covering um, a clinic in Conyers, so I think that was about a 45 mile commute for me, one way, and so I left um, pretty <coughs> early that morning, um, somewhere around 7, somewhere between 7 and 7.30. So that would have been a day that Ross was going to take right. food for the daycare. And as far as you, you knew, that's, that's what he did. Right. Did, did y'all discuss that morning that he was going to go to Chick-fil-A? No. Um, did, you have, did you have much communication with Ross throughout the day? We texted a few times throughout the day. I texted him. Asked him if he got to work okay. Uh, that was pretty common. It was something that I would do. Um, it, it would range from um, did Cooper enjoy his breakfast at school to did you get to work okay? How are things going today? You know, things like that, just to kind of check in. Um, and on that, that particular day, we've asked you to look back at your, your, your text messages. Um, and do you remember specifically what you texted him that day? I believe it was did you make it to work okay or did you get to work okay? Did you have any other communication with him later on in the afternoon uh, by text message? I I want to say that um, he texted me about the movie time that he was going to go to. Um, there was a text. He asked me what time, you know, when I was going to go pick up Cooper. Um, there was a little bit of discussion about who would be the best person to pick up Cooper that day. Um, I think that we talked about that on the phone um, because I didn't know, if, at that time, I didn't know the, the exact movie time he was going to. I didn't know if maybe he would want to pick him up and us meet at home. Um, so there was some discussion about that, but it was decided that I would be the one to pick him up. All right. Um Just one moment, I'm going to look for one piece of evidence. Leanna, I'm going to show you what has been admitted into evidence in the defense of 68. Um, this is uh, this is extraction in the court. This is um, texting that came from Ross's phone. I'm going to ask you to take a look at that and see if you recognize that. I do. Is that the text messaging between you and Ross? what it was specifically that you texted to Ross that morning. Get to work, okay. And what was his response? Yep, yep. And what else did, did y'all text throughout the day? Uh, right after the yep, yep, he said, we're going to go to an early movie, so I should be home close to 7. And I responded back about an hour and a half later and said, okay. And then at 3.16, he asked me when, I would, when, when you could... When you getting my buddy? And uh, I texted back, 
about 45 minutes later and said, call me, are you not going home first? And I think that's when we had the phone conversation about who would be the, the best person to pick up the phone. So when, um, so the text we see here all said, when, are you kidding my buddy? 315, 316 that afternoon? You agree he didn't ask you, at that point he didn't ask you, are you kidding my buddy? He asked you. When, yes, at 3, 316. That phrase, my buddy, is that a phrase that you heard before? Yes. Tell us about that. Um, he referred to Cooper a lot as his little buddy, uh, my buddy. Uh, we did, we both did it, um, but Ross used it more commonly, and I probably kind of picked it up a little bit because of him. Okay. All right, let's, um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and... and uh, Jump forward to the uh, the afternoon. You you showed up at showed up at the Lakers, right? Right. Do you remember about what time you got there that afternoon? I really don't. Um, it was probably somewhere between four thirty and five. Um, I think uh, I think I left Conyers around four, and it would have taken me. About 50 minutes to get over there. Were you expecting to pick Cooper up that day at the lake? Yes. So what um, what happened when you got there? Um, I walked into the daycare just like any other day. Um, they have a a computer system that um, you check the child in and out, and I went to um, check him out, and it, he wasn't checked in for the day. Um, but that's happened before, so it really didn't, it didn't strike me as, as very odd. Um, and I just, I went ahead back to his room and opened the door and uh, started looking around for him because he would normally be playing. Um, and uh, the teacher that was there, she looked at me and she said, what are you, what are you doing here? I said, I'm, I'm here to get Cooper. And I'm just looking around for him. And she said, well, Cooper's not here. And I, I, I didn't understand. I, I thought she was joking. Um, I may have even said to her, I mean, are you joking? And, you know, kept looking around for him. And um, he, she said, he didn't come today. And uh, I just kind of I just kind of went into a panic. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. Um, I uh, left the room ran down the front desk, and uh, the guy that was there, uh, I said, they're telling me Cooper wasn't checked in today. Where's Cooper? I can't, I can't find Cooper. I don't remember the exact words I said. Um, I, I just, my, I was, I was starting to, to lose my ability to understand what was going on. I was just It didn't make sense. Cooper was supposed to be at daycare. I was supposed to be the one to pick him up. It didn't make sense. Who was that person at the desk, Leanna? I'm pretty sure it was Terrell. It had to have been Terrell. Did you stick around? No. I what? wanted to... The only thing that made sense to me, based on everything that I knew that day, Ross was, Ross was left in the car. That was the only thing that made sense. It was the only thing that, that flicked in my mind as, as even a remote possibility. He was never checked in. If he was never checked in, then he must have forgot. I told him, I said, I want to go over to where Ross works and I want to, I want to find his car. I didn't know how they were going to the movie. I didn't know if they were going to carpool. I didn't know if they were going to meet. I just wanted, 
I wanted to get to where I knew Ross could possibly be. I tried to call him. I couldn't get him on the phone. And they tried to get me to stay. And I said, I'm not staying anywhere. I need to find my son and I need to find my husband. And so they, they had Terrell come with me. That's, how, that's why I know he had to be the one at the desk. They had him come with me. Um, and we drove over to the treehouse. I looked in the parking lot for Ross's car and I didn't see it. So we went inside. Um, once we were inside, um, <coughs> I had probably tried to call, I don't, I don't even know how many times I tried to call Ross. I tried to call him every two or three minutes. It just kept going straight to voicemail. And so I, we went inside and uh, we were trying to figure out when Ross left work because I didn't know what time he had left. Um, so the, the guy that was, was at the, the front desk, he, he said, who are, you, who are you looking for? We told him his, or his name. I said he was, he was planning on going to a movie with a friend. What's his friend's name? I, I, I could only remember Winston. I couldn't remember his last name. So they, you know, they looked him up in the computer. I was, my phone was dying. I was trying to keep my phone charged because I, I kept thinking, I'm going to get Ross on the phone and then everything's going to be fine. We're going to get this straightened out. It just, none of it, none of it made sense. Um, I was going back and forth to my car and putting my phone on the charger so that I could call Ross try to get in touch with him. Um, things start to get very fuzzy as to when they happened or how long it took. Um, I don't know how long we were at the treehouse. Let's, let's talk about the lobby. Do you remember sitting in the lobby of the treehouse? Do you remember there being television screens? Yes. <coughs> I know you said it's, <coughs> it's become hazy, uh, but to the best of your recollection, what what happened there as the news was on on the television in the lobby? Because I was going back and forth um, from my car to the inside of the lobby, Terrell and the, the guy that was there, um, they were behind the desk, I guess trying to, I think at that time they were trying to figure out when Winston left. Um, and I came back in at one point and I saw, I saw them watching the TV. I didn't see what was on the TV, but I saw that they were interested in something on the TV and I said, what's going on? And Terrell said, well, basically he, he kind of said, well, nothing, and, and they turned it off or changed the channel. I'm not sure which one they did. Um, I didn't see what was actually on the TV. I went um, back and forth to my car. Like I said, I don't, I do not know how many times. Um, sometimes I would just sit out there and you know try to figure out what to do. Um, I actually had a uh, one of the daycare teachers call me and say, "Leanne, I think it's time to call the police." And I didn't. In in my mind, I was thinking everything's going to be everything's fine. This is this is it, not that it's fine, but I was in complete denial about the situation. And I was actually looking at my phone trying to figure out how to call the police because I didn't really, nothing I've had to do before. Trying to figure out what I, what I would do, what I would say, and my phone rang and it was a detective. They told me um, to, stay, to stay where I was, that they were gonna come to me. I said, will you please just tell me what's wrong? I know something's wrong. And they said, no, we're going to talk about it when we get there. I, and I said, well, it's bad, isn't it? And he said, yeah, it's bad. We're coming there. Just, just stay there. Tell us what happened then when the detectives uh, showed up at the treehouse lot where you were. Can you repeat? Tell us what happened when the detectives showed up at the treehouse lobby where you were. 
before the detectives got there, I went, I went back in and I sat down on the couch and I just, I started, I could feel myself start to go numb. It was like I, I wasn't even in my own body and I was just sitting there and I, Terrell sat down next to me and I said, you know what's going on, don't you? Because I could just tell they knew something. And he said, well, do you, do you want me to tell you? And I, I think I made the comment, like, what does it matter if you tell me or guys that I don't know come tell me what's wrong? I said, do you, do you know what's wrong? And he said, he said, all I know is that they, they said that a child had died. Ross's car on the news. He said, that's all I know. When, when the detectives got there, they took me into a conference room and sat down with me. I can remember walking to the conference room thinking, I'm going to wake up. This isn't, this isn't real. This isn't happening. told me that my son was deceased. I, I, I can't remember exactly. I just, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know, I didn't know if Ross was okay. I didn't know if I, I didn't know anything, and I just wanted them to tell me what, what, what had happened. I just, I needed more information, and I wasn't, I wasn't believing what they were saying. It wasn't, it just wasn't, it just wasn't real. Yeah, the, um, were you aware that that conversation had been recorded? I'm aware now. I wasn't aware then. Okay. I don't been. think so. I, I don't remember. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to, to, to hear yourself during that interview at the um, treehouse? I, I don't. I didn't even recognize myself. What do you mean? It was like another person took over my body. It was like. It was like I wasn't even there. I just did, I didn't, I couldn't understand. I, I didn't, it wasn't real. And sometimes it still doesn't feel real. <laughs> were you able to cry when you were talking to the detectives? No. wasn't and I didn't understand why they just told me this and I can't even cry and I didn't understand why You talked to the detectives at the treehouse. Did um, where did you go from there? They um, they took me to they took me to my apartment. Um, they needed a key. They told me that they were going to um, be getting a search warrant for our our home, and that it was part of the normal process. And um, <coughs> asked me if I would be willing to give them a key. And so they drove me over to to our home, and I gave them I gave them the key, and they passed it on to whoever was there. My um, my neighbor was there, and I wanted I wanted to see somebody that I knew um, that they wouldn't let me see. Who was that person? Joey Nesbitt. Who wouldn't let you see that person? The detectives.
Where did you go from the um, from your apartment? They drove me to the, um, I believe it was the Cobb County Police Headquarters. Were you in handcuffs? No. To the, to the best you can remember um, what was going on, um, can you tell can you tell these folks sort of what happened when you got into the lobby of the police department? They didn't take me into the lobby. They took me in through, I guess, a side door. Um, they things get very fuzzy. And by fuzzy, I mean like I don't, I don't know how long things lasted. There are things that stick out in my memory. There are things that I completely lost. Um, I remember that they sat me down in a um, a chair that was kind of it looked like there were cubicles or desks kind of sitting around in that area, um, and they just basically told me that that I would get to see. Ross and um, to just basically sit there and, and, and wait. Did you have anybody with you? No. I had um, a couple of the daycare teachers out in the lobby. Um, I asked if I could be with them. They wouldn't let me be with them either. Discuss the matter and show each other's company. We'll take a moment. Let's all rise from the building, please.